peace i'm making another video what's up guys i'm just uh making another random video at the spirit of the moment uh just talking about whatever's on my mind you know i'm just uh trying to get in the habit of making videos back to back so whatever's on my mind i'm just gonna spit it out i don't know where it's gonna go so uh right now the topic i want to talk about is the topic of religion now in the last video uh was about why i don't put out videos on spirituality uh it was mainly talking about um why i don't really like talk about new age so-called quote unquote new age stuff whatever you want to call it you know because uh, i'm into stuff dealing with like you know conspiracies uh stuff dealing with uh ufos and anunnaki uh the multiverse uh chakras whatever you want to call it you know what i'm saying i'm I, I love i love all that stuff and the reason why i don't really like do videos on it even though i really i really would like to but it's just like i, I just i don't want to like put my own interpretation because there's so many different interpretations about you know the or the origin of man where mankind came from you know you got like uh some people say well like humans were like genetically created by the Anunnaki, by the anunnaki by aliens you, you know what i'm saying you got some people say that uh humans are we live in some kind of a computer simulation that all of this is an illusion all of this is not real then of course you got uh the religious people which i'm gonna talk about in this video who say like well we're made in the image of god and you know you know they're fundamentalists they believe in genesis and uh you know same way with like judaism judaism islam and other religions you know the humanity was like divinely created and things like that so you know what i'm saying so what what i want to say is like i've been I, lately I, I actually uh starting actually i would say like early this morning i was up like four or five o'clock in the morning watching just like for some reason i just started watching youtube videos about religion and for some odd reason I was, something led me to it because actually i was doing some other research and other on some other stuff and while i was clicking on some videos i came across some uh religious i never heard of before in there and i clicked on them then it led me to some some other videos dealing with christian doctrine and one thing i wanted to talk about is like the whole story of the lost books of the bible how they say like uh you know the bible as it is is like the king james bible or you know as it is the 66 books in the bible all that's the all the books are divinely inspired you know and in all the all the books that were taken out of the bible they were taken out because you know they weren't divinely inspired and you know and i was watching this uh video i'm not gonna name i'm not gonna name the guy in the video like i said it's a random video i forgot who it was i might have to go back and look for it but uh he i guess he was a protestant guy and he's debating the catholic some kind he's debating the catholic or whatever right and you know catholics have more books in the bible compared to the protestants you know what i'm saying and they're like debating and the protestant guy was uh you know you try to use history history to justify why like the book of maccabees was taken out why the apocrypha was taken out and he, he was trying to like justify it and he was going to like you know he was talking about the different councils like the council of nicaea he was talking about augustus Augustine, St. August, St. Augustus, I believe it was, is a mother piece, St. Jerome. He was, he was just going on and on about the, these certain saints and these all these councils throughout history that, you know, that they, they decided which books were canon, which were which weren't, stuff like that. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, if the Bible is divinely, if divinely inspired, if all the books in the Bible were divinely inspired, why do you need like a council of humans, of men? to decide which books were included and which books were taken out that's contradictory you know what i'm saying because uh and also, and also i was watching this other video about it, it was breaking down like the book of enoch 
and it was talking about the Ethiopian church, Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the Coptics, and how like uh, in the Ethiopian Bible, which is like the oldest Bible in the world, how like they, I believe they have like seventy. It, I mean, they have, I think some some versions have seventy, seventy one, seventy two books in the Bible, and I think like the full Ethiopian Bible is like eighty eight books, something like that. Of course, it includes like the the Kebernegas. Uh, includes the, the Ethiopian book of Enoch, uh, includes, uh, I think includes like Jubilees, I, be, I believe, the book of Jubilees, if I'm not mistaken. It was some other books they were talking about. And, uh, and I was watching this other video. They were talking about like, uh, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls. They were talking about, you know, all the books that were taking out the Bible, you know, saying and the preserved, the preserved the mechanisters, the Gnostic texts, stuff like that. And I, and I was thinking to myself, if okay, this a like a, a, per, a, Christ, a person who's a Christian, who uh, who's like a real Christian, not 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 a, not a Christian who's like confined to the church, but a Christian who uh, studies on his own, um, you know, who doesn't recognize denominations because, you know. We got Catholicism, Protestantism, Orthodox, and plus just within Protestantism, you have different factions within that. You know, you got like uh, the Methodist, the Baptists, the the Lutherans, uh, Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Evangelical, whatever, right? And I was, and I would have this question of like if there's one Jesus, if there's one Bible, one Jesus, what's the point of having all these denominations? And all, if all these denominations are man made, you would think that the Bible in this, you know, there are the the politics that are involved in bringing the Bible together, compiling it, you would think that throughout history you had the, the same forces that created denominations were also the same forces that two certain books at the bible so <laughs> you know what i'm saying so why it doesn't make sense why mainstream christians would say like all the books that were taken out the bible are like false demonic or whatever it doesn't make any sense because the same forces that took the books out of the bible were the same forces that caused the division we got protestantism protestantism catholicism and all these denominations and I and it and it's very odd that you have like Christians uh trying to like uh justify why the books were taken out. You know what I'm saying? And I just I just find it like very, very strange, you know, because you know, you got like the book of Enoch, uh, you know, or, or talk about the apocrypha. And uh and I and I was also watching this uh I think it was in, it was like in the same video with the Catholic and the Protestant. This guy, the Protestant guy, he admitted that there was a time where, like, there was a debate of whether to keep the book of Revelation in the New Testament. There was, like, a big debate. You know, the book of Revelation barely made it into the Bible. And this Protestant guy actually acknowledged that. So, and I'm like, okay, if that's the case, then, you know, if the, if the book of the Bible is divinely inspired, if all the books were, like, compiled by God, why was there a debate as to whether that certain book should be kept in the Bible or not. You know, it doesn't make any sense. And they also talk about the uh the book of Enoch. And they were saying like in the in the book of Jude the book of Jude in the New Testament references the book of Enoch. So if you have a book in the Bible, the book of Jude in the New Testament that references the book of Enoch you would think that that book has some some weight and has some weight in uh validity validity to it so so you can't say like well the, you know it's not canon so it doesn't count if the book of jude mentions it you know but that's uh but you know i just, I'm just sitting there thinking thinking some thinking to myself about that you know what i'm saying but in my personal library i have all like i don't have, I don't have like every book but i have like a lot of uh you know the so-called gnostic gospels the, the, the gnostic gospels so-called lost books of the bible I got those. I got the Book of Thomas, the Book of Mary Madeline. I got the whole Nakamadi Library. Uh, I got the I got the Book of Enoch, and I also have the Book of Barnabas, 
the book of Barnabas is a, was one of those lost books in the Bible. As far as I know, I mean, I've watched um, a lot of documentaries on History Channel, Discovery Channel. I mean, I've watched like a lot of documentaries where they talk about the lost books of the Bible. They talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls or whatever. But as far as I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I can remember, I have not heard any documentary or anybody talk about the book of Barnabas, as far as I know. Yeah, even on YouTube, you don't really, they really don't have a lot of videos on the book of Barnabas, on the gospel of Barnabas. Harley. I, you might find like, even though with the search, it's like very hard to find. You might find a little stuff here and there, but it's like Islamic because, it's, you know, long story short, uh, the book of Barnabas, the gospel of Barnabas was one of the lost books of the Bible. Yeah, but the, eventually the, the Arabs got hold of it and the Arabs acknowledge it. But this is like, uh, but as far as I know, I haven't heard of any scholar in the mainstream or anybody talk about that book. And there's a reason, <laughs> there's a reason why I don't, they don't want to talk about that book. Which I'm, I'm not going to get to, I'm not going to get into in this video. And, uh, you know, the first time I heard about it, it was like, you know, through uh, Malachi York, he talked about it a lot. Um, the lost books, you know, the, the gospel of Barnabas that was taken out of the Bible. And, uh, and it comes down to like lost books. And I'm trying to think what other ones you got. Of course, I said the Gospel of Thomas, um, Mary Magdalene, um, the Maccabees, first and second Maccabees, Idris is, an, Idris is another one. Uh, and there's like a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of them, you know what I'm saying? Lot, so called lost books, you know, that, uh, you, I mean, you go on Amazon and you go on Amazon and buy it. They're not like, they're not like suppressed or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? All the all the information is out there. And I got this other I got this other book called The Lost Books of the Bible. And it, and it actually has uh the book actually has third Corinthians in it. You know, you know, like in the New Testament, you got first and second Corinthians. That actually there was actually a third Corinthians that didn't make into the Bible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I got I got that on my bookshelf right there. And so it it goes to show you that. You know the whole debate of rather if either like the Bible's divinely inspired or not. Just think about like okay, you got the King James Bible, then you got these other, like you got all these other translations like um, you know the New King James. Um, what else? Uh, uh, I can't even think of a uh, Amplified Bible. The everlasting Bible. What uh what else? <laughs> uh shoot, they got like all these like uh what uh new international version. Uh, this is like this one made a version of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? It is one version of the Bible that that's hard to find. I remember uh there's this version of the Bible you can't really find it's called the Pharaoh Fenton Bible or something like that, if I'm saying it right. But I think it was like this guy named Pharaoh Fenton, he translated it from like the actual Hebrew and Greek verbatim, like in early 1900s. I was meaning to order the book. I didn't have got around to ordering it because back in the early 2000s, you can buy it. But if you go on the internet now, you can't really find it anywhere. Hardly, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's, but I remember that you they had like excerpts on it online. And, uh, yeah, I remember like he translated Genesis, and keep in mind this is like the early this is like the early 1900s, you know, turn of the century. He, you know, he, I remember he translated like the first chapter of Genesis. He actually like mentioned like planets, and I think he, you know when he said like Elohim, he said he, he wrote down like God's G O D S or something like that. Whatever he mentioned solar systems, and you know it was it was interesting. I can't, I wish I could find it. But it's on my wish list, but I still want to get that translation, you know. And uh, I mean, there, there's so many, so many translations like the Vulgate translation, uh, the William Tinsdale translation, uh, you know what I'm saying. But I always tell people that, you know, if you got like an old King James Bible, either, even it's, it's, it's gonna sound corny, but if you have like an old King James Bible, like your old grandma, grandma's Bible. That she had since she was like you know since she was a little girl or whatever hold on to those old king james bibles because like in the i believe like in the future things are gonna get so woke <laughs> you know what i'm saying they're gonna they're gonna they're eventually gonna start like 
retranslate the Bible, make it more catered to like the rainbow people and the woke people and stuff like that. So just hold on to your Bibles, you know what I'm saying? Especially like the old King James, original King James, you know what I'm saying? Those That's a Bible I'm in to use all the time because that's like closest to like the original translation because these other Bibles, they're okay, you know what I'm saying? But I think, uh, you know, like nowadays they got all kind of, they got like the woman's study Bible and they got these Bibles where they're like, they make God a female and all this kind of stuff. It's just so out of whack, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But so I would say like, hold on to your old Bibles, you know, you know what I'm saying? Cause they're going to, of course, they're going to they're gonna try to ban the Bible in the future. It's something about, well, it's, it's, you know, they got, you know, it's, you know, it's not politically correct. And all that kind of stuff. So you got like every now and then you hear on the news here and there they're talking about like, you know, trying to suppress the Bible and you know what I'm saying, ban the Bible, stuff like that. So just hold on to your Bibles, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh but you know, when it comes down to re religion in general, it's a touchy subject because because everybody who's people who are religious have an emo they really have an emotional attachment to the religion. It's an emotional attachment. You know, that's why you have people who are Catholic uh, try to uh, debunk or talk bad about the Protestants. You have people who are Protestants who try to, I mean, I would say try, but they actually like try to like debunk or, dis, you know, they try to like talk bad about the, the Catholics. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the process of the argument is like, well, the Catholics, you know, they acknowledge Mary, the saints, that's not biblical, which is true. Uh, but the Catholic argument is like, well, the Protestants, they're too loose. They're, they're, they're not as strict and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and, you know, so, so they kind of like go back and forth. I mean, they're both Christian and the Protestants argue, Protestants will say like Catholics are not Christian, but that's a whole other topic. But it's, it's kind of like, you know, I, I just like sit there, observe it, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and one thing about like a lot of Christians, they have this moral superiority, so, but well, if you're not part of my denomination, if you don't believe, if, you, if you're a Protestant, I mean, if you're not a Protestant, then you're not a real Christian. Then Catholics will say like, well, Protestants, you know what I'm saying? They're just, they rebelled against the true church. And so they're fraudulent and stuff like that. So, but that's, uh, you know, the whole debate is the whole back and forth is very interesting. And my stance on it is like, you know, a, a person is a sincere Christian just study the Bible for yourself. Don't be afraid to like read the lost books. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't be afraid to read the book of Enoch. You know, don't be afraid to read the Gnostic texts. Don't be afraid to read the Dead Sea Scrolls. Don't, don't be afraid to read the Nagamati Library. Uh, don't be afraid to, to read the Apocrypha. You know, don't be afraid. To, don't be afraid to read the Book of Barnabas. Um, you know, you know, just um. Uh, you know, you know, don't confine yourself to like uh, man-made Christianity. You know, if there are books out there that you can use, they they can edify you. Read them. You know, but uh, that's all I got, I got to say on that. You know, what I'm saying that was pretty much what's on my mind right now. But if you want to like uh, comment, if you have if you have a disagreement, comment below. If you, you know, if you disagree, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. And make sure that you uh, watch my other videos about my rants and ramblings. Like my video, subscribe. Uh, if you want to, like, email me, my email's down below as well in the description. And that's all I got to say for that. And peace.